Well, the man who's helped pull this report together is uh, Peter Backer from the WBCSD. And uh, we're going to hear from uh, Peter very, very shortly. He, we're going to have a discussion, first of all. But sorry, we're going to have a discussion a little later. But first of all, Peter, I know you've got a few introductory remarks. And I just want to reiterate that you have really pulled together a powerful piece of work here. I thank you very much, uh, Tom. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We're actually quite excited to launch Vision 2050, Time to Transform uh, Today. More than two years of work with over 40 global companies helping us have pulled this report together. What I want to do today is talk about three things. First, why this report and, and why now? Secondly, give you some of the key messages coming out of that report. And thirdly, so what? You know, if you're a business leader, you get a report like this on your desk, what are you going to do next? So here's the why. You know, sustainability is really going mainstream. Uh, we know it's become a rather complicated topic. And in this Vision 2050 report, we want to bring back the focus on what truly matters. As Tom said, there are three global challenges that we all need to face up to. The climate emergency, the loss of nature, and the mounting inequality. In climate, we know that the world has eight more years of today's emissions before we'll move across the one and a half degrees of warming, which is the boundary for the safe operating space for humanity. If we want to stay below one and a half degree, we need to halve the global emissions by 2030 and be at net zero by no later than 2050. Nature, of course, talks about the accelerating extinction of species, both plants and animals. We in this report clarify that the world's GDP is for over 50% dependent on the services that nature provides. And then mounting inequality, it's now a world where 1% of the people own 44% of wealth, where 10 people on the planet have gained half a trillion dollars of wealth during the pandemic, while an additional 160 million people have been pushed into extreme poverty. COVID has made a number of things clear. First, these big challenges, climate, nature, inequality, are completely interconnected. Secondly, it has shown us that the systems that we operate in the world are very ill-prepared for the shocks that a pandemic and later on climate or nature may bring to our systems. So we believe we need a common vision. The common vision is that nine plus billion people living well within the boundaries of the planet by mid-century. And this is not just a collection of simple words. This is real deep work with scientists and experts from around the world. So nine plus billion people indicate that we're expecting two more billion people to join the planet by mid-century compared to the seven point something we have today. Living well means we need to respect the dignity and the human rights of all. We need to make sure that basic needs are met and we need to provide equal opportunities to all. The planetary boundaries refers to the planetary boundary framework that science has been developing over the last decades. Obviously, we need to stay below one and a half degrees of warming. We need to restore nature and use it sustainably. We need to make sure that the Earth system is resilient. So how do you move from the challenges we have today to the vision we have for 2050? That's going to require system change. Everybody in sustainability these days talks about system transformation. But our report, Time to Transform, really pushes beyond just words. It defines what system transformation is, how it happens, which macro trends, innovations, and enablers make it possible. In simple terms, it's about profound change at root cause level. It requires new ways of acting, new ways of thinking. And that's not where we stop. We work with member companies, with business, and business wants to act. So we've actually added nine transformation pathways to move from where we are today to our vision for 2050. These nine transformation pathways are there for the business activity areas that are most essential to society. They range from energy to food, from mobility to living spaces, 
health and well-being, connection, and a few more. For each of these pathways, we have identified what is the vision, what are the key transitions that we need to put in place in the coming decades, and most importantly, what are the 10 action areas that every company in those spaces should implement between 2020 and 2030, making this an actionable framework for businesses to take the lead in the transformations that the world needs. The risk of nine transformation pathways is that this sounds like an engineering job, that all we need to identify, what's the problem, what's the solution, and the engineers will work it out. And that's not true. We need a mindset shift. We need a new way of thinking. And in the report, we have identified three new ways of thinking. We need to reinvent capitalism. We need to make sure that our business operations are resilient. And we need to make sure that we run uh, uh, regenerative business models. Of these three mindset shifts, the change of capitalism is by far the most important. Capitalism has to take a longer term horizon. Capitalism needs to begin to integrate the externalities. And it needs to hold boards, CEOs, and business leaders accountable, not just for their financial performance, but for their impact on nature and on people as well. If we can change capitalism in this direction, if we can make it longer term, then resilience and regeneration will become an automatic outcome. So a report like this is aimed at the business uh, community. But it does not mean that business can do this alone. We need to radically collaborate in the coming years. Firstly, business leaders need to work together. Not one CEO can change a system. Not one company can do it. But by working together across value chains, we will. We need to work together with scientists and entrepreneurs to get to the innovations that we need to make these transitions come alive. We need to work together with financiers and investors to make sure that the funding is available for the transitions and that sustainable behavior gets rewarded. We actually need to work with all people on the planet. Everybody makes everyday consumption choices and those choices matter when it comes to realizing the vision. And last, but certainly not least, we need to work together with governments, with policymakers, to get the policies and the regulations in place that will accelerate the transformation and not hinder it. So what? What can you as a business leader now do? Well, my advice is take this vision and make it yours. Then map the big challenges and integrate them into your enterprise risk management systems. Understand where your exposures are. Then look at the transformation pathways and look at what are the opportunities to innovate? Where can my business with new solutions contribute and as a result be successful in the future? And last but not least, set ambitious targets, create operating plans and transparently disclose the progress you're making to the stakeholders around you. I'm talking about system change. This means changing everything, including changing the rules of the game for business. Adopt TCFD push for standard ESG disclosures. The rules of the, change need, of the game need to change. If we do that, then well-run companies will be run well into the future. It is time to transform.